Hello, hello, hello. Precious women of God, are you there? Hello, it's Deborah Ross. It took me a minute to get on. Facebook has been changing their, um, their system, and so it makes it very difficult. I'm looking at my hair there. It makes it very difficult for me to get signed on because they're changing things, and it's just... Um, Things, their little gadgets aren't working as good right now when I go live. So I did want to get on tonight. Um, I didn't really um, advertise it a lot. I just stuck it out there just a minute ago that I would be getting on tonight live. And I have been getting on the past uh, three or four or five days on different pages live. I've been getting on Deborah Ross, Deborah Ross Ministries, um, just different pages going live just to try to reach as many people as I can and encourage them during this time of uncertainty and I got something on the mouth I'm sorry but during this time of um, just so much going on in our world today so I've been trying to encourage everyone um, you know with God's Word so I'm, I hope you ladies can see me I hope you'll get on I feel like this particular page has been very slow about um, getting people on and I'm not sure why um, so I just pray that everyone can see and they will be able to get on um, but you can see that I'm going live tonight so hopefully you ladies will be on here with me and we can do our study time so I'm just click, I don't really know how this works, but I'm clicking invite these friends. So I'm hoping that it invites these friends. <laughs> so I hope it does. Um, we'll see what happens. I'm inviting people, but we will see. Um, let's see here. I'm inviting people, inviting people, inviting people, inviting people, uh, inviting people. Yeah. Okay. So we'll see what happens. Hey, hey Tempe, I'm glad you're watching. Um, so here's what we do. When I do these Facebook Lives, um, if you will, um, type in your name and where you're from because what will happen is it will pop your name up on the screen. It's just like a little um, flag that shows me somebody's watching. But when the video goes away, that will not be there anymore. And so if you don't type your name in, I won't have any evidence of you being there. And I really, it really does encourage me when you type your name in. So please do that, if you will. Type your name in and where you're from. Hey, Susan. Hey, Tempe. Good to see you. People are getting on. That's wonderful. Um, I do a Facebook Live Bible study typically every Tuesday night at 8 o'clock p.m. on this page. Um, as I said, I have been getting on other pages um, over the past four or five days. My Deborah Ross page, my Deborah Ross Ministries page, and some other pages doing some lives just to encourage everybody because I know this is a very difficult time for everyone. And um, so I think it's just good that we connect through the internet and just, you know, encourage one another. So, hey, hey, Pastor Kendra, good to see you. Y'all be sure to type your name in and where you're from. Give me some love. Give me some encouragement. Yeah, Tempe, I'm glad you typed your name in. My cousin Tempe from Georgia. Good to see you. And Charlene, good to see you from Winget. Very good. Kendra, very good. Good to see all of y'all. Um, tonight is going to be very laid back because honestly, <laughs> just like you, I have been through a lot over the past couple of days. And um, so... I am just going to give to you what I have been doing because I my mind has been just as bombarded as yours. My life has been just as bombarded as yours. Um, and fear has tried to creep in over and over and over and over in my mind. It's, it's a mind game. It's a mind game. Um, now, it is a physical thing, too. We have to be smart, and there's people that are uh, infected right now. I mean, you know, and some people are infected, don't even know it, because you could have mild symptoms. You can have mild symptoms and, and really not even know it. So, but regardless of the state that we're all in, because we're all in this together, um, this is what I do in my personal life to, to deal with this, because, um, because my mind has really been all over the map, all over the map. I mean, it's like, you know... Um, 
I feel like I've got great faith because I know the Word of God and I'm trusting God and all of that. But then, you know, you watch one little clip of the news and then bam, your mind is all over the map again. And then you see there, you know, uh, in Charlotte, they've just told everybody they've got to stay home starting Thursday. Um, you know, you can't even, can't go out and do anything really, basically. you got to stay in your home. So there's just a lot of things happening, a lot of changes happening right now. And it's it, it does play on your mind a lot. It plays on your nerves. So, but, but what I've been doing, ladies, is I have been, um, please, please, please come against the spirit of fear. Yes, it is, has become a stronghold during this time. Yes, it has, Pastor Kendra. It's the spirit of fear came over me like a flood on Friday. So today's Tuesday. So it came over me like a flood on Friday. It actually, I felt the spirit of fear enter me, to be honest with you, on Monday when I had to cancel or postpone, not cancel, when I postponed the women's retreat, the minute I made the decision to postpone the retreat, because I had to, because they told us we couldn't gather, the spirit of fear tried to enter in me right then. And he's been trying to torment me ever since, but I refuse to let the spirit of fear win in Jesus name. And so what I do is I, um, I speak to the spirit of fear and I tell it it must leave in Jesus name. That's number one. But number two is when your mind gets in this crazy thing where it's like, it's almost like you can, you really can't control it. It's just like your mind just goes crazy. And so I have, um, gone to YouTube and pulled up healing scriptures. I pulled up, um, encouraging scriptures. There was one I listened to the other night and I've tried to post these on some of my other Facebook pages. Um, so, and I think I, I may have posted on this page. If I didn't, I will post it when we hang up, but I know it's on Deborah Ross Ministries Facebook page and my personal page. And these are just YouTube channels where these people, it's like they, they play music and you can go to sleep. And it's like one of them has three hours of scriptures and the other one has like an hour of scripture. And so I've been putting my earplugs in my ear at night, and I just let that play. And I'll be honest with you, it takes about 20 minutes at least for my mind to calm down and even hear the scriptures, because that is how tormenting the spirit of fear is. It tries to come over you and tries to just like, um, just, just put this black cloud on you. So, but when I wake up in the morning, I'm refreshed because I have had God's word going in my ears throughout the night. And just meditate, meditate, meditate on God's Word because God's Word is the truth. You know, we have the facts, and the fact is there is coronavirus. The fact is that, you know, um, that we're going through this. I mean, the whole world is going through this thing. And the fact is we see all this stuff on TV. And the fact is there's germs everywhere and all this stuff. The fact is we're staying, you know, social distancing. There's all these facts. But the truth is that God says that, you know, that we should not fear. He's not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of, of, lo of love and of a sound mind. God says that, that he loves us and that he's our healer. And so here's the thing. And he's our deliverer. He's our protector. And we're going to look at his word directly in just a minute. But what are we elevating? Are we elevating the facts or are we elevating the truth? Because the truth trumps the facts. Don't elevate the facts. Yes, the facts are real, but you elevate the truth. And the truth is God's word. The truth is God's word. We've got to keep God's word elevated. Hey, Diane, good to see you. So that's very important. And the thing is, is that, you know, and I know Pastor Kendra is I think on here watching as well. And, you know, as ministers of the gospel, we know God's word. I mean, we know it. I mean, we teach it all the time. But when that spirit of fear comes on you, sometimes it's hard to think of God's word. And so I'm telling you what I do, because I know if, if this is happening to me, those of you that don't study God's word all the time, you've got to be really struggling, most likely. And so what you need to do is you need to do what, do what I'm doing. You know, if you need to post the scriptures on your walls, Post them on your walls. Post it on your refrigerator. Post it on your kitchen cabinet door. Post it on your front door. Post it on your mirror in your bathroom. Post God's protective scriptures and his healing scriptures all over your house, everywhere you go. So that way, if you can't remember it, then you can at least look at it and read it. You can look at it and you can read it and you can, you can uh, begin to memorize it. You can quote it. You can say it out loud. 
Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So you've got to speak these things so your ears can hear it. Speak it out loud. Use your Bible app. Listen to the word of God. Um, there's Bible Gateway. There's all these different um, blue letter Bibles and all these different things on your cell phone. And you can pull up these Bible apps and you can play the Bible in pretty much any translation you want. And you can listen to it. And just let God's word speak to you and just wash your mind, wash your mind, wash your body with God's word. Wash, be washed by the word. That's what I have to do. I have to be washed by the word. And I have to put all of my trust and all of my faith in the Lord. And like I said, you know, um, some of you watching may have already experienced some symptoms. And you know what? It's okay because no weapon formed against you shall prosper in Jesus name. No weapon formed against you shall prosper in Jesus' name. And so we stand on that. We stand on that in Jesus' mighty name. So we pray that, that you don't experience any symptoms, that you just escape it all. That's what I pray in Jesus' name. But if you do experience some symptoms, you know what? It's not going to prosper. It's not going to take root. It's not going to pull you down. So, you know, this is just a virus. My friend, um, Sarah Elizabeth, who I think is watching right now, um, even said this to me the other night. This is, this is a virus. And people recover from viruses. So, you know, it's not like, it's not a death sentence. It's a virus. And so we've got to be strong. We've got to be full of God's word. We've got to be full of hope. We've got to be, um, we've got to, we've got faith comes by hearing. You've got to say that word. You've got to post that word all over your house. You've got to listen to that word. Get your Bible app out. My son just called me. Hold on one second. Jay, call Garrett, please. So anyway, sorry about that. My son just called me on my cell phone. So um, let me cut that down real quick. Okay. So anyway, um, so what I want to do tonight is this is very informal, and if y'all have any questions, I'll try my best to answer them as I go. I'm looking at your names pop up here. Hey, hey Angie, be sure to type your name in, and Tammy, and Sarah, if y'all would type your names in and where you're from. Um, if you have questions, you can ask them. Hey, Jody. Um, and uh, if you don't have questions, what I was going to do is, like I said, very informal tonight. This is not a regular Bible study like I normally do. But the, a couple weeks ago, I actually pulled up some healing scriptures and I taught on these. And you know what? Let me just, let me just throw this out there. I taught, this is crazy, but I taught on healing the whole month of February. So lots of you need to go back and pull up those videos. They're on this, they're on this page, the woman to woman ministry slash private group. They're on this page. You just, you can pull up all the videos in the archive here. So, but you need to pull up the ones that have already been taught on healing. And it was just really God. I mean, honestly, at the time that I taught those, those uh, messages, it really wasn't because of coronavirus. It was just because what God laid on my heart. And so I taught um, on healing and there's like three or four videos, maybe five, uh, which is specifically on healing. But tonight I'm going to revisit something. I'm going to revisit some healing scriptures because I want you to get these down in your spirit. And if you've got an ink pen and you want to write some of these down and pull them up in your Bible, um, again, you know, I'm going to post this if I haven't already. And I want you to also pull up these uh, healing scripture um, YouTube links that I'm going to tell you about, and I want you to listen to this. I want you to listen, listen over and over and over. I've been doing it every night, so you need to do it too. Get God's Word down inside of you, and do not let go of it. Don't let go of God's Word. Don't let go of God's Word. I don't care what devil tries to, tries to peek through your front door. I don't care what devil tries to whisper in your ear. I don't care what devil tries to cause any kind of symptom or whatever. You elevate God's word over it. The fact and the truth, but the truth has to be elevated higher than the fact. And don't give the devil's report. Don't be talking about the devil's report all the time. That's one thing I taught on um, in February when I was teaching about healing, about people talking about the devil's report. Let's don't talk about the devil's report. Let's talk about God's word. Let's talk about what God says. What does God say? What does he say about this? Hey, Sherry. Hey, Patricia. Hey, Sarah. Hey, Tina. Good to see you. Okay, so if you've got your ink pens, I'm just going to read some healing scriptures uh, to you. And you can write these down. You can pull them up and all of that. 
like I said, very informal. If y'all want to ask questions or if you just want to make a comment or whatever, if you need prayer, type it in. Let me know. I'll try to try my best to see um, as I'm doing this as comments come up. Okay. Okay. So Hebrews 13 8 says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. So that's your foundation right there. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if you get that as your foundation, get that down in your spirit, get that in your knower, way down deep in your knower, that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What he did from Genesis to Revelation and throughout all eternity is his will. Okay, God's word is his will. God's word is his will. So there are facts, and facts are very real, but facts are not God's Word. God's Word is His will. So let's don't mix up the facts with God's will, okay? Yes, God allows things to happen, and that's, you know, we don't understand all of that. We don't understand why God allows certain things to happen, but He does. But it doesn't mean that that's His perfect will. It doesn't mean that's his perfect will, okay? He, his perfect will is his word, and his word is deliverance and healing and protection. That's what his word is. His word is a strong tower. It's a shield. It's a buckler. You know, he covers me with his feathers, and, and I get up under his wings, and I trust that. I trust his word. So his word is the truth. Hey, Melissa. Hey, Susan. Y'all be sure to type in your name. And where you're from, okay? If I type in your name and where you're from. Okay, so Matthew 4, 23 says, And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all, everybody say all, type in all, <laughs> healing all manner of sickness. Now, when he said he healed all manner of sickness, do you not think that he healed coronavirus? Of course he did. He healed all manner of sickness, all. There is nothing too big for God, nothing too hard for God, uh, nothing impossible for God. And the Bible says that every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord. Well, that's just not human beings. That is also coronavirus. Coronavirus has to bow. It has to bow to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So Jesus went teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's the truth. That's the truth. And the truth trumps the fact. Okay, Proverbs 17, 22 says, A merry heart does good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. And here's the thing, ladies. If, you are, if you've got your TV on 24-7 on that news report, you're drying your bones up. You're drying your bones up. Turn it off. Get your praise music on. Get your healing scriptures on. Get your laughter on. Get a funny movie on. Get something on, have some fun, talk about something different, laugh. Because a merry heart does good like a medicine. We need to laugh. We need to be in joy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, I also taught in my uh, previous teachings, and I do want you to go look these up. There are four or five healing teachings on this page that I just taught last month, and you need to go listen to them all. Even if you heard them the first time, listen to them again. Because, like me, we're leaking. Okay, we're like colanders. We're leaking. And so, it's like, I might be full right now, but an hour from now, I might be empty. And I've got to get it back in me. I've got to get it back in me. Sometimes I can listen to my own messages so I can believe my own self. So, you've got to keep listening to the Word. You've got to keep getting the Word in. Okay, so... Jeremiah 17, 14 says, Heal me, Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, Lord, and I shall be saved, for you are my praise. Heal me, Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for you are my praise. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, Matthew 9, 36. And like I said, write these down if you've got a pen, because you, you might need to pull these up. Okay, yes, yeah, Sarah, Sarah Elizabeth said, Limit the news to 10 minutes max twice a day. That's right, yes. Uh, 10 minutes max 
twice a day or once a day. <laughs> Limit it. I mean, all you need to know is just the, the bare facts. That's it. You don't need to know all all those details and all those gory whatever whatever you don't need to know all that you know it is what it is okay but we're going to trust God we got to keep our minds clean and our minds clear and we got to focus on the Lord Matthew 9 35 and Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people so a minute ago I read that he healed all and that was uh, Matthew 4.23. And now I just did Matthew 9.36 where it says he healed every. So he healed all and he healed every. Praise the Lord. All and every. And that includes coronavirus. That includes coronavirus. Praise the Lord. Okay, Luke 9.6. And they departed and went through the towns preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. So this is um, people that Jesus anointed to his disciples, he, who he anointed to preach the gospel and to heal. And there's even a place in scripture where Jesus actually appointed 70, 70 something people. So it wasn't just the 12, it, it was everybody. And not only that, but he also says in Mark, he says, you know, in my name, you will cast out devils, you will heal the sick and all these different things you'll do. He's talking to us. He's talking to us, those that believe. So, you know, yes, we've got wonderful doctors and wonderful nurses out there on the front lines, but I'm going to tell you something. God says that we can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And so if you don't have a doctor or a nurse in your home and you can't get to a test or this, that, and the other, this, that, and the other, you lay hands on yourself, you lay hands on your children, you lay hands on your husband, you lay hands on your family member, and you believe and you quote God's scriptures because he says you lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And that is the truth. And the truth trumps the fact. Okay, the fact is real, but the truth is more real than the fact. Because God is more real than anything in this world. And he trumps everything in this world. So we have to keep God's word elevated. Praise the Lord. Thank you for those hearts and those smileys. Praise the Lord. Let me know you're there because... That does encourage me so much when you make comments or just do little hearts or something. Okay, so Luke um, 9, 11. And the people, when they knew it, followed him. And he received them and spake unto them of the kingdom of God and healed them that had need of healing. You see, this is what I was teaching in February. And I, I really want y'all to go back and listen to my February teachings because it's almost like it was prophetic. I didn't know we were going to be in this situation that we're in now when I taught that. I taught that because I believe it. I taught it because it was on my heart to teach it. But I didn't know that I was teaching it in preparation for this. But those videos are on this page and you need to go listen to them. Because you need to get yourself built up with this. You've got to know down in your knower that Jesus only did the will of the Father. He did the will of the Father. And it would be an oxymoron. It would be uh, like he would be a false prophet if he came and healed the sick and it wasn't God's will because he only did the will of the Father. You know, I think it's, it's a teaser. It would be a teaser if he came and only healed the people during that time period. But then he says, oh, everybody else from this time on, too bad. You don't get it. Just the people who actually saw me when I walked the earth. No, that's a teaser. God is not a teaser. God is, he's our, he's our daddy. He's our father. Now, I know some of you that haven't been taught this before, what's going through your mind, because it goes through everybody's mind. You're thinking, yeah, but everybody's going to die. Yeah, everybody's going to die one day because we live in a fallen world, but it was not God's will for us to ever die from the very beginning in the Garden of Eden. Dying came because of sin. So it's, it's part of the curse. It is not part of the blessing. But God has a remedy for death, and that is heaven. So God's will is always health and it's always perfection, okay? So until that time comes that we've lived a good long life, as Psalm 91 says, he, he says he will, show us his, he will show us his salvation with a long life. Psalm 91, go look it up. With long life, he will show us our salvation. And so the thing is, is that... Um, we have to we have to stand and believe. We have to stand and believe for that long life. You know, you can't just say, "Oh, well, I guess this is it," and throw in the towel. No, 
stand and believe in Jesus name for that long life this too shall pass this too shall pass so you've got to understand that that Jesus is a healer and God is the same yesterday today and forever and again we praise God for our doctors and nurses because they're doing the will of they're doing the will of God they're doing the will of God and what's so beautiful about it is they do the will of God and some of them are not even Christians and they're doing the will of God and helping people who many of them are not even Christians. That's how good God is. That is how good God is, that he would send us human beings who know how to lay hands on the sick. And yes, they do use some, some physical things like some medicines or some surgeries or different apparatus things that they use. But hey, Jesus did too. Jesus spit in the mud and he rubbed it on the guy's eye. Jesus made, made a medicine. He did. So here's the thing. God is for healing. He is not for sickness. He is for healing. That's his will. And so if you can just get that down in your spirit and get it down in your believer because the devil's going to try to convince you otherwise. And in fact, when you get off this video tonight, the devil's going to, the first thing he's going to do is sit on your shoulder, especially those of you who have never believed this or never been taught this before. And the devil's going to start whispering all these lies to you and trying to get you back in that place again. And you can't you can't go there. The truth has to be higher than the fact. Whose report are you gonna believe? I'm gonna believe the report of the Lord. Whose report are you gonna believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. His report says, I am healed. His report says, I am filled. He is, his report says, I am free. His report says, victory. His report, that's his report, I choose to believe. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, Acts 10, and this is verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power and went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Coronavirus is the devil. It's the oppression of the devil. Coronavirus is the devil, period. It's demonic. It's demonic from the pit of hell. And so Jesus healed. He went about doing good, and he healed all that were oppressed of the devil. Okay, 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 9. Now, this is talking about spiritual gifts. And if you go read 1 Corinthians um, and you learn about all the different gifts, there are nine different gifts of the Spirit. And one of the gifts is the gifts of healing and it actually says gifts of healing because there are many gifts of healing there's many different ways to get healed and like we just talked about there's doctors there's nurses and god has anointed them many of them not even believers that's just how good god is that he would use sinful man to bring healing to mankind but then god also uses ministers of the gospel he also uses just common people like like you, like me. He just uses common people because he says that we, as the body of Christ, have the gifts of healing. And we need to activate those gifts of healing. And it starts with your mouth. Your mouth needs to line up with the Word of God and stop quoting the devil's report and the woe is me and, the, and I'm the fear and all that stuff. Start talking about God's Word. So it starts there. Get it down into your belief system. Praise, worship, you know, and just and lay hands on the sick. Like I said, you know, if you're hunkered down in your house, as many of us are with our families, you know, you get those hands on those children. You get those hands on that husband. You know, you lay hands on people and you claim in Jesus' name that they are healed in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you, Father. So there's the gifts of healing. Praise the Lord. And that's by the same Spirit as what it says. So, And what is that same Spirit? It's the Holy Spirit. So the same Holy Spirit that lives in me lives in you. The same Holy Spirit that lives in me lives in you if you're a born-again Christian. And if you're a born-again Christian, then you have access to the gifts of the Spirit. And many people will say, well, I don't have that gift. Well, no. He says that he divides uh, unto us severally as he will. In other words, he will divide these gifts to us as we are obedient to listen to him. In other words, in time of need, basically, he will divide these gifts to us in time of need as we are obedient and willing to participate with the Holy Spirit. Many times the Holy Spirit will say things to us and we ignore the Holy Spirit because we're afraid. 
We're afraid. We're afraid to pray for people to be healed. We're afraid to lay hands on the sick. We're afraid. And so we ignore the Holy Spirit and we just, you know, but if we'll, if we'll learn to participate with God, he will divide all of those gifts. It says severally as he will. So he will, at whatever time of need you have, you can activate these gifts. Okay. Praise the Lord. You don't have to say, don't say, I don't have that gift. Yeah, well, you, you got gift to give somebody cough medicine. You got gift to, you got the gift to give somebody a Tylenol. You got the gift, okay? So you just you just start using it. And it doesn't have to be with the Tylenol. It doesn't have to be with the cough medicine, although that can be part of it, okay? But you can also pray and you can lay hands on people. And you can believe God. Believe God, okay? And, you know, as mothers, that's what we've been doing the whole time raising our children, is we've been administering medicines and we've been taking care of our kids all this time. Now we just got we got to put things in high gear. We got to be in high gear. This is this is not uh, times as we've known before. This is a different time, and so you got to be in high gear with your discernment, with listening to the Lord. Don't listen to the devil. Don't let the devil talk you out of your healing. Don't let the devil talk you out of your divine protection. Don't let the devil talk you into fear. The devil is a liar in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Okay, Jeremiah 30, 17 says, For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord, because they called thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. <laughs> you know, so, so when people say, Oh, so you're a Christian? You know, and, and you got this or you got that, God says He will heal you. Don't you don't you get in fear, don't you get in shame, don't you get in anything if you get any kind of symptoms or anything like that. You you just you just hang on to the Lord and let the Lord raise you up and you will be a living testimony. So whether you avoid it altogether, and that's what I pray that everybody does, avoids it altogether and walks in divine health. Or whether you go through some symptoms, you know, here and there, whatever. Because um, we've all experienced things like colds and flu, sinuses and different things. So whatever the case may be, know that God says he will restore health to you. He will restore health to you and he will raise you up and you will be a living testimony in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Okay, I love this. Jeremiah 33, 6 says, Behold, I will bring it health and a cure, I will cure them and will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. I love that. The Lord says, I will bring it health and a cure and I will cure them and will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. And ladies, here's the thing. This is God's word. This is God's word. And, and you know, so many times we just read over these scriptures and we will I tell you what we've done. We've allowed religion to steal these scriptures from us. And now at the point of need, here we are, and some of us are depleted. We're depleted of our belief system because we've allowed church as usual to steal healing scriptures from us. Well, this is not church as usual. This is not church as usual. This is, we are on the front lines of a war. And we're at war against against the demonic powers of hell called coronavirus. Those little invisible demons that we can't see. And so we've got to say, you know what, God? I'm going to choose to believe you. I'm not going to believe all that religious hogwash that I've believed all these years about healing. I'm going to, I'm going to believe you, God, because I'm going to take something. That's all we got right now. That's all we got. We're going to believe God. And that is more than enough. God is more than enough. That's what's so wonderful. He's more than enough. More than enough. So you see, all these, these years, many of us have been relying on all of the things we could do. You know, well, we can do this, and we can do that, and we can take this pill, and we can do that pill, and we can get this vaccination, and we can do this. Well, okay, now what? It's all God. It's God. It's God. And the heat, but God says, he says, I will bring it health and a cure. I will cure them. And so I choose to believe God. That is the truth. The fact is we got the situation called coronavirus. We got the situation called everybody stay in your own home. We got the situation of people not working and all this stuff going on, this craziness. 
you know, but we got the truth. The truth is God's word. The truth is God's word. And I'm not going to put the facts above God's word. I'm not going to do it. The devil tries to make me do it, but I'm not going to do it. I'm going to get my cell phone out and my Bible app out and my YouTube out, and I'm going to get my my praise stuff going on, my praise music, my praise scriptures, my healing scriptures, my protection scriptures, and I'm going to have God's word going in my ear, the truth of God's word going in my ears all the time. And washing my mind, washing my mind, washing my body. God's word is health to us. His word is health to us. So not only is he healing my mind, but he's healing everything in my body. His word heals me because he's God. He made me. He made me in my mother's womb. He knows everything about me. Why can't he heal me? Praise the Lord. Why can't he heal you? Why can't he protect you? Think about it. Think about it. Hey, Robin, good to see you, babe. Okay, so um, let's look on. Okay, John, 3 John. No, let's go to Acts 27.34. Acts 27.34. Wherefore, I pray you to take some meat, for this is your health, for there shall not an hair fall from the head of any of you. I love that. Okay, so you know what? Y'all just go eat a good meal. And I tell you this, I did read that you need to eat a lot of vegetables and a lot of fruit during this time to build up your immune system. So y'all need to be eating a lot of vegetables and a lot of fruit. And I also read that you need to be drinking, take fresh lemons, cut them up, put them in hot water, and be drinking that, get some good vitamin C from lemons and just build up your immune system. So, but the Bible actually says right here to eat some meat, basically eat some food. And he says, he says, this is your health for there shall not a hair fall from the head of any of you. There shall not a hair fall from the head of any of you. Praise the Lord. Now, if I was you right there, I'd say I receive it. I'd type in, I receive that in Jesus name. You got to receive it. Don't fight against the word of God. You got to receive it. You got to be bold and receive it in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Okay, 3 John 1 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. Okay, what does this mean? This means that as your soul, your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. So as your mind, as your will, as your emotions are prospering by the Word of God, in other words, as your mind is starting to agree with the Word of God, and it's, it's a struggle. It's a struggle to get your mind to agree with the Word of God because we got too many things, too many images, too many words, too many bad reports, too much religion, too much naysayers, too much all this stuff in our mind. And so it's a struggle. You have to be diligent about making your mind line up with the Word of God. So as your soul prospers, as your mind, as your will, your grit, your will, and your emotions, that's that fear. As that fear begins to leave and that faith rises up and you begin to prosper in that way, he says, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health. You will be in health as your soul prospers. You'll be in health as your soul prospers. If your soul is not prospering, it's hard to be in health. If you're going to live in fear, if you allow fear to take you down, it's hard to get your body to line up. Your body, think about this. Um, you know, even with the church and with the head of the household, the home, everything comes from the head. So you think about the preacher, the church comes from the head. You think about the home, uh, the order of the home comes from the from the um, from the father, the dad, the man. Okay, and then you think about um, you know if you want your body to line up, if you want your body to line up with healing, you got to get your mind, the top part of your body, to be the leader. Okay, so you got to get this to be the leader right here so that all of this will line up because everything comes from the head. Everything comes from the head down. Praise the Lord. That's from God. That's not before. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Um, okay, Psalm 32. Oh, Lord, my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. Oh, Lord, my God, that's th Psalm 32. I've cried unto you, and you have healed me. Tammy, I love that. Ann, I love that. You said, I received it. See, you got to be bold.
bold. And you said, I got, I receive it. That's right. You got to be bold, ladies. Here's the thing. I mean, you know, there is no time in this season that we're in to hide. It's time to come out from among them and be separate. It's time to come out from among them and say, Lord, choose me. I will, I will have faith. I will believe. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Lord, I got plenty of unbelief, but Lord, I'm choosing to believe. So would you please help my unbelief, Lord? I am in this. Lord, I receive it in Jesus' name. I receive it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay, Psalm 107.20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Now, what I love about this in a time is that what the devil will do is if you've been out getting your groceries or you've been out, you know, some of you maybe are have certain jobs that um, like deliveries or whatever, and you're still doing your jobs and different things where you're out in the public, or maybe, you have, maybe you're in the medical field or you have some kind of service job and you're out there, you're on the front lines. And so... You know, if for any reason you were to start showing symptoms, then the devil would want to tell you what's your own fault because you should have known better than to get out there. And he'll start using God's word against you. He'll use God's word against you and he'll start quoting uh, scriptures and proverbs about wisdom and he'll start telling you you didn't use any wisdom. Okay, well, this is where you just come back at the devil right here. Okay, on Psalm 107, you just, you just shoot this bullet at the devil right here. God says he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. So in other words, even if, you know, because you're, even if it's because you were out there trying to make a buck, you know, because you've got a service job or whatever, and you're just trying to keep going, you know, don't let the devil shoot you down and tell you something because God said he sent his word and healed you and delivered you even if you were out there when maybe you could have been home. God sent his word and healed you anyway because that's how good God is. He heals you anyway. Sarah, I love that. This is why this virus is different. It affects our mind. That's right. I love that. Yes, I, I love you, Sarah. I'm glad you're on here. Um, yeah, and I, I, Sarah's in the medical field. She's on the front lines, and we're praying for her. But I love her spirit. I love her spirit because she's she's full of the Word of God, and she sees things with discernment. So I just praise God for people like her. Okay, so um, okay, this is Isaiah fifty three five. But he was wounded for our transgressions; he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. With his stripes we are healed. So, you know, so many times we read these scriptures, we know them, but we don't allow ourselves to see we've been talked out of them by religion. We've been made to think that it means something different. But I'm going to tell you something. When you need a healing, it means exactly what it says. With his stripes, you're healed. He took the punishment of your sin upon his body. So... We do live in a fallen world. Unless Jesus comes back before time for all of us to finish our life, then at some point we're going to die. Um, but Psalm 91 again says that he will give us a, he will satisfy us with a long life with salvation. He will show us his salvation with a long life. Okay, so I stand on that. I stand on Psalm 91 with that long life. I don't, I don't. I don't let my mind go anywhere else. That's where I'm staying on Psalm 91. That, that's me. I'm staying right there. So, but the point is, is that um, we've got to understand that, that these, scripture, these scriptures we've been reading the rest of our life, we just haven't allowed ourselves to really, we've been, we've been too comfortable. Really, I hate to say it, but we've been comfortable. And we've not allowed ourselves to have faith um, that pleases God. I mean, that's just, that's just the bottom line. That's just the bottom line. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. We must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So Isaiah 53 says, he was wounded for our transgressions. Do you believe that? Of course you do. He was bruised for our iniquities. You believe that? Of course you do. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. In other words, he was chastised for our, for our sins. We are the sinner and he was chastised. 
And then it says, and with his stripes, we are healed. His stripes, his stripes, when he was beat and the blood and just whipped, and by his stripes, we are healed. He took on that. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so let's go on and read another one. Um, Let's see. Uh, okay, Matthew uh, 8, 16. When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out out the spirits with his word everybody say with his word he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick his word his the word heals the word heals the word heals the mind is the battleground the mind is the battleground we got to wash our minds we got to wash our minds the mind is over the body we got to keep those minds focused on god's word praise the lord hallelujah Okay, um, Matthew 12, 15. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. Great multitudes. Great multitudes. He healed them all. He healed them all. Now, I want to present something to you because I want you to think about what the devil tries to tell you, you know, well, <laughs> if God chooses to heal me or, you know, Maybe God doesn't want to heal me, or I know how the devil says all these things, okay? And the thing is, God's word is his will. God's word is his will. If Jesus healed, then he only did the will of the Father. You have to keep coming back to that. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Forever. Okay, you've got to come back to that. But let me present this to you. So when Jesus was walking the earth, um, there were people, I'm sure, well, we know this for a fact, that did not follow him. There were people that said, crucify, crucify, crucify. There were people that mocked him, that, that th rolled their eyes at him, that thumped their nose at him. That There's people that maybe didn't, didn't even know about him because he didn't go to their area. There's people that maybe didn't even know about him, didn't even know he was on the earth. Those people didn't get healed because they didn't follow him. Okay, now I don't have time to unpack all of that. I'm just saying this. Don't let yourself ask so many questions and create so many obstacles to receiving God's word. Don't say, well, you know, well, um, how come God didn't heal them? Or how come? Stop it. Stop it. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I want to be one of those all that followed him. I want to be one of those all where it says he healed them all. So I'm not going to be one of those ones that was thumping my nose at him when he walked the earth or one of those ones living in a remote part of the earth where I never even heard about him or one of those words that said crucify him, crucify him. I want to be one of those ones that followed him and he healed them all. He didn't say, well, yeah, I'm going to heal you, but I'm not going to heal you. I'm going to heal you. Well, no, I, he didn't do that. He healed them all. That's what he did. That's what he did. Read your Bible. Read your Bible. Stop listening to religion and read your Bible. Your Bible is going to save your mind. Your Bible is going to save your body. You've got to read God's Word. Ask the Holy Spirit to show you. When I was a baby Christian in the early 90s, I, had, I was watching Christian television. I was hearing people talk about healing and hearing people talk about miracles and, you know, laying hands on the sick and all this stuff. And I'd never heard of such. I was like, God, is that real? I mean, I was questioning, but I was like, I was totally intrigued because it made sense. I mean, if he's God, he ought to be able to heal. And if Jesus healed, it just made sense. So I began to really study the word of God. And I got the ink pen out, and I just started reading line by line, really slow, starting in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, just really slow. And every time I would see something about healing, I'd underline it, and I'd just meditate on it. Just think about it. He healed them all. And then he'd start listing diseases, because there's diseases listed in the New Testament as well. 
but he heals all diseases. So even if it's not listed, he still heals them all. But I was just curious as to the ones that were listed because it was things that were very common things that people have today. And he healed them and I was just underlining those things. And I came to the conclusion in, in the early 90s because I, because I sought the Lord with my whole heart and I closed my ears to the naysayers and to the religious folk. And I found out that it's God's will to heal. And that's where I've been ever since. Now, have I ever been sick before? Yeah, since I believed I've been sick. But have I been healed? Yep, I've been healed. Every time I'm here today, I've been healed. So I want to live in that place of believing God. And I've got some great testimonies to share with you about other healing in my family and different things. I mean, my grandchild that was just born recently is an absolute miracle. I mean, it's a he is a complete miracle in every way, and I'm not really ready to tell the whole story yet, um, simply because we're waiting on some other things as he develops with some, I mean, he's completely normal, but it's a long story. Anyway, the devil just tried not to let him be born healthy, but the devil's a liar. So anyway, so, um, but it's a miracle. It's a miracle story. And I've got many, many stories like that because God heals. God heals. God heals. I'll just tell you this much because I know you're curious. But he was, when he was in his mother's womb, he was given a very bad report. And they actually did an emergency C-section about five weeks early. Um, and it was, I mean, it was a really bad report. Like, like, like we didn't know what was going to happen during that birth. It was, it was bad. And... He is, uh, let's see, he was born November 27th, I believe, and this is March the 24th, so he, I just had him at my house this weekend. He's just perfect in every way. He smiles, he laughs, he giggles, he eats, he poops, he does everything. He's, he's just beautiful, and, but I'm going to tell the hospital going through all this stuff, and when we got those bad reports, it was bad. I mean, it was really bad, really bad. And I was fasting, I was praying, I was believing. You know, there was people, um, some people rolled their eyes at me because they thought I was crazy for, for believing God. Now, I still believe in wisdom. I believe in the doctors uh, doing everything they know to do. But then when, when the doctors can't do anything else, I believe in God. I believe in God. And, and I'm not going to accept, just because somebody saw something on the ultrasound, you know, ultrasounds can be wrong, number one. X-rays can be wrong, number one. And number two, even if they're right, they can be changed because God can change anything because he's God. And every knee must bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. And he's a miracle working God. So, you know, we've got to believe God. You know, I go back to... Preston, my oldest son, which is actually the father of my grandbaby, when I was pregnant with him, um, they told me that I needed to go have, a, I think it's called an amniocentesis, because they thought that he was, um, trying to think of what, oh, had some kind of mal, uh, malformation. Basically, what they wanted to do is they wanted to do an amniocentesis, and if they deemed that he was not going to be normal, I could have an abortion at that very moment. That's basically what they were going to do. Okay, it's my first baby. And so, um, you know, me being a, a mother for the first time, I didn't, I just, you know, I was just stunned, shocked, hurt, everything. But, you know, I went to, I went to Charlotte, to the place they told me to go, and I'm laying there on the table, and they're getting ready to do this amniocentesis, and they told me how dangerous it was, and that basically the baby could die just from even having the test done. And me and my husband just... Prayed. I mean, my husband wasn't even a Christian at the time. I was I was a baby Christian. My husband wasn't even a Christian. But I believed in healing because I had just read it in the New Testament. And I had just, I had just taken my pen and done what I told you to do. I had just read it all, okay? And so we just decided we weren't going to do it. We weren't going to do the amnesty and Jesus. And, you know, however he came out is how he came out. But we were going to believe God that there was going to be nothing wrong with him. And, of course, there was nothing wrong with him. He's perfectly fine. He's almost 28 years old now. And 
the father of my grandbaby. And so, but there again, that's a time in which the report was really, really bad. And not only was the report bad, but the process that I was going to have to make a decision to go through was even worse than the report. So, you know, we got to come <laughs> you know, this is where the rubber meets the road. And this is where I've got to just put my big girl pants on and say, you know what, it's time to have some faith. It's time to just say, God, I, I believe you. I don't believe, I don't believe any of this mess. I mean, I see it's a fact, but the truth is bigger than the fact. And I'm going to keep my faith in the truth. I'm going to be wise. I'm going to wash my hands. I'm going to sanitize my surfaces, wash my clothes, you know, not go out randomly in public and do stupid things, but I'm just going to elevate the truth and I'm going to believe God because God's word is his will. God's word is his will. Cindy says, I have a miracle child. Melinda, she used to teach uh, at dance. She has been here 31 years. Praise the Lord. That's right. Yes. We got to believe the Lord's report. We got to believe the Lord's report. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, so, and, and listen, if any of you have ever had amniocentesis or any of you have ever had any, anything where you, again, don't let the devil, don't let the devil sit on your shoulder and say, you know, guilty. The devil is a liar. Okay, I was just telling you my testimony because it was just a miracle that God prompted me, a baby Christian, and my husband, who wasn't even a Christian, to even go that direction. The whole thing was a miracle. But I just want to tell you that miracle story because I want you to know that God is in the healing business. He's in the healing business and he changes things. That's what he does. He's, he's a good God. Praise the Lord. Okay, Matthew 8, 8. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. Speak the word only. Speak the word only. Speak the word. You speak the word. You speak the word. Get that word going out and your household will be healed. You will be healed. Speak the word. Praise the Lord. Okay, um, let's see here. So, oh gosh, it's 8.58 and I've got so many more, but let me just, um, let me just pull this up real quick if I can find it real quick on my phone and just show you through the computer what I want you to do. Um, because I want you to, I want you to do this. I know some of you are in fear and your mind is going crazy and you need to do this. Okay. So I'm going to show you two different things on YouTube and I don't know if it's going to be backwards here and if you can even see it. Oh, can you see it? Can you see that? Okay. That's a YouTube thing and I, I will post it on this website too. Can you see that? Can y'all see it? Okay. It says scripture soaking healing. I love this one. This is one of my favorite ones. I've listened to a lot of them, but this is my favorite one. Scripture soaking healing. Um, and I've been listening to this almost every night. There's another one I listen to, and this one says scriptures for protection. I love this one too. This one, the guy talks kind of fast, so <laughs> you got to really be paying attention. It's kind of hard to go to sleep. He's talking so fast, but, um, but it's still good because it's scriptures for protection. It says for worry, anxiety, uh, God's promises for strength, and faith in hard times. So this is called Scriptures for Protection. I'm going to post these on this site. I want you to and I want you to get it down in your spirit that God is for you. God is for you. And you get that Psalm 91 down in your spirit and you plead the blood of Jesus over your doors and you drink that lemon juice and you eat those fruits and vegetables and you wash your hands and do everything you're supposed to do you know, but if something happens and you show symptoms, it's, you, hey, you're going to be healed in Jesus' name, number one. And number two, don't let the devil condemn you and make you think that you shouldn't have done this or you shouldn't have done that or this, that, and the other because the devil's a liar and he sent his word and healed you and delivered you even from your own mistakes. He delivered you even from your own mistakes. So don't you get in self-condemnation about anything. Liar. 
okay? All right, well, let's finish with prayer. Father God, I pray that you would bless these women watching. I pray, God, that you would protect their homes. I pray, God, that faith would rise up with them, Lord. I pray, God, that you would create an army of believers, Lord, during this time, Lord. For such a time as this, Lord, I believe, God, that you were just moving throughout your people, Lord, that you're just opening their eyes, Lord, to the supernatural, opening their eyes, Lord, to the spiritual gifts, opening their eyes, Lord, to your will, opening their eyes, Lord, to your word and the power of your word and the power of your name. Lord, just open them up, Lord, that they will understand how much you love them, Lord, and how you not only have everything in control, Lord, but, the, but God, you also have it in control because you say, Lord, that you want to prosper us and give us an expected end and do us good. Do us good and not evil. That's what your word says. And the expected end is a good end because everything in your word is so good. So, Lord, I just thank you for your word. I thank you that your word heals. It heals every cell in our body. I just thank you for that, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you for that in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that you just wash over us and you heal us, Lord, in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. I pray that you'll bless these women and bless their families, protect them, and Lord, keep them until we get back on here again for more Facebook Lives and for more Bible study. And I will talk to you later, and I love y'all. So see you later, everybody. Bye. Oh, go back and watch all those videos, too, all the ones in February and early March on healing. Uh, I did two or three by myself. I think I did three by myself and me and Robin did two or three. So you need to watch all those healing videos and just keep your mind washed in the water of the word. Okay. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.